Former? Oh! What happened to my voice this morning? Former? Let's... Uh, my voice is very dry, apparently. Let's, uh... Oh god, I did comedy drinking for the sound of it, but then I just sucked water down the wrong hole. Bloody hell. Former Sony Interactive Entertainment Worldwide Studios Chairman Sean Layden has kicked off a hearty discussion about video game length versus video game price with his suggestion that the AAA game model of lavishly produced lengthy games at $60 isn't sustainable. Now, the bloated budgets of mainstream game development is something I've railed against for years. I would welcome the return of the 12 to 15 hour game, said Layden. I would finish more games, first of all, just like a well edited piece of literature or a movie. I've been looking at the discipline around that, the containment around that. It could get us tighter, more compelling content. It would be something I'd like to see a return to. The cost of creating games has increased, he said. Some studies show that's gone up two times every time a console generation advances. The problem with that model is it's just not sustainable. Major AAA games in the current generation go anywhere from $80 million to $150 million or more to build, and that's before marketing. It's a huge upfront cost. Extended over time, it takes three or four or five hours to build a game while you're not getting any return on the investment. You just continue to pay into it, looking for the big payoff at the end. I don't think in the next generation you can take those numbers and multiply them by two and expect the industry to continue to grow. Well, one of the main problems there is that the game industry stopped being interested in trying to grow the game industry naturally to try and grow it in a measured, sustainable way. Now, some adherents of the AAA propaganda machine will tell you that the rush toward microtransactions and DLC and loot boxes was a response to how expensive video games are to make. Those people are wrong. They glommed onto microtransactions because they represented explosive growth, which in their mind had no upper ceiling. As we saw from the Activision layoffs last year, they are struggling to keep that perpetual growth going because there's no such thing as perpetual growth. And that is all they're struggling to keep going. The industry rakes in billions and billions and billions off of this additional content, off of what it calls recurrent user spending. It's made up for the cost of game development many, many, many times over. But the more money they make, the more they want, so the more microtransactions we get. And we get bloated games, games designed to be played perpetually or for as long as possible to keep you within their economies. That's part of why some of these games don't just last a long time, some of them these days are designed to literally have no end. And one would like to think that the sheer volume of cash these games make allow publishers to put some resources into something with a little bit more artistic ambition than simply making money, but most of the time they don't. Most of the time that money goes inside the pockets of millionaire and billionaire executives. Anyway, I keep having to stop myself going on some lengthy screed about microtransactions again. So let's circle back to game length as a discussion topic. I recently just published my Jim Pressions video for The Last of Us Part 2. One of the criticisms I had of that game is it just doesn't end at the right place, like Red Dead Redemption 2 before it. There are about I want to say between three and five stopping points, good natural stopping points for The Last of Us Part Two, and it doesn't take any of them. It just drags the experience out and out and out to the point where there is an entire final chapter that, in my opinion, shouldn't be there. It feels like The Last of Us 3 that they've squashed down and, and sort of rushed through to make this final act. And that comes after 24, 25 hours of remarkably po-faced, cynical, miserable storytelling. Which is a lot for a game that has such a po-faced, bleak and cynical story. That's a long, long time that game wants you to submerge yourself in a depressing time. And that brings me to a great thing Layden said when he said that he thinks that some of these games being cut down would create tighter, more compelling content. That's called editing. Now, I love editing. I think editing is magic. It's taking raw footage and then chipping away at it like a sculptor, turning it into a coherent piece of entertainment. If you've never had the pleasure of seeing something raw and messily filmed turned into something that is tight and well-paced, I mean, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a special kind of happiness, let me tell you. And there are many 
self-indulgent triple a games that are so bloated in content and go on for so long that i want to point at them and say you need editors or if you've got them you need to fucking listen to them better there are a number of self-styled auteur directors in the game industry who i believe overestimate their talent pool it's not that they're not talented it's that they think they're talented in more areas than they are and that's one of several reasons why i think games go on longer than they should the last of us part two in my opinion, suffers from a number of pacing issues that I feel could have been addressed if the game had been tightened up. Now, it's harder to edit an entire fucking game full of systems and interactions than it is to edit footage. But then again, sometimes you can see an entire chapter of a game and think, why the fuck is this in here? It serves no purpose. People complained about the six to eight hour campaigns of last generation, but a lot of those campaigns were pretty damn good. Some of them specifically because they were so short. They didn't have time to waste. They packed in their story and told it at a good brisk pace. And I would love to see more of those breezily paced campaigns come back. So the question has come up, would you rather have long 30 to 40 hour games that cost more than $60? Or would you like these eight to 15 hour games that cost about the same? maybe even a bit less. Well, first of all, let's bring up the $60 myth that the Jimquisition has talked about in the past. With a lot of these AAA games, the $60 is what I call a shell price. It's a starter price. It gets you into the base experience, but then the microtransactions and the season passes and the DLC and the collector's edition content and all the other associated money-making schemes and scams represent the full total cost of the game. Which, of course, not everyone playing the base experience buys into, but enough does. Enough that companies rake in billions of dollars. And even if game publishers raised the prices of their big 30 to 40 hour games, there is no chance in fucking hell that they would stop with the DLC and the microtransactions, all the recurrent user spending bollocks, because they're corporations. They see an opportunity to charge more as simply an opportunity to make money not to rebalance their shitty broken market. This idea that if a game cost more, it wouldn't have an exploitative in-game economy is not dissimilar to the myth of the trickle-down economy, this idea that if you keep giving money to people who have all the money in the world, they'll give some of it back in some way. They won't. They won't. So in that regard, I'm against games costing more simply because they will cost more and then have their fee to pay bullshit on top. And I already think it's fucking insulting that you're spending $60 on a game with a freemium economy in it. Maybe if more third-party publishers were showing an interest in making games, you know, closer to the Last of Us 2 end of the spectrum, sure, I could entertain the idea. But I'm offended at the idea of $10 games having microtransactions in them. So if you tell me a game's going to cost $80 and it's full of just cosmetic costumes, fuck off. Just, just fuck right off. As for those games closer to The Last of Us 2 end of the spectrum, the narrative-driven games, so few of them, in fact, probably none of them, need to be 30 hours long. You could have done The Last of Us 2 in eight, eight or 10 hours, and it would have been a tighter, better paced experience just as a result of having some fucking editing. As far as game price goes, I'll put it this way. The moment there's a game worth buying for a hundred bucks, I'll buy it for a hundred bucks. Make a game that's worth it, game industry. Try. Don't turn a $60 game into a hundred dollar game surreptitiously by selling content for that game on top of the game. That's the trick you currently do. And all of this is to say nothing of the human cost of these games. Of course, every time The Last of Us Part Two's come up, I've brought up Naughty Dog's excessive crunch practices, said to be standout in an industry where overwork and downright dangerous labor is common. I mean, at the point things are, I'm in favor of anything that burns down tradition in the game industry, especially as we've been learning this week, that tradition involves lots of forms of abuse. 
Stuff that personally has just like dredged up a bit too much of my own past trauma for me to fully go into here. Like, ugh, childhood shit. Especially as I just had to burn bridges with the company I moved to Philadelphia to work with in the wrestling industry because it turns out that was full of fucking abusers. I mean, I've said it for a long time, look at what the game industry does that's openly shady. Then all the stories of crunch and bullying and, and toxic workplaces that we see once we scratch the surface. Now, imagine what happens when we kick this entire industry over and look at its grimy, seedy, greasy underbelly. I realise I've gone off on a tangent, and I don't mean to suggest that games being long is the reason why people have been abused and bullied in the industry. But I am sick of things in the game industry being the way they are simply because that's how they've always been, or they've been that way for a long time. And that attitude, that attitude of, well, our culture is our culture, we're not going to change it, that attitude is responsible for a lot of poison that's in the game industry. Or indeed in most industries. So on that note alone, I say yeah, yeah, start adding some price tiers in the game industry. That is something I've wanted for years. I've brought this up before as well. Let's just stop thinking that everything is either a budget indie game under $20 or a $60 game with tens and tens and tens and tens and tens and tens of dollars worth of additional costs. Just do something different. Just change. Please.